These are eternal promises. Let me tell you, God doesn't break his promises. Amen. Take, the, take God's word tonight, please, and turn to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 14, please. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 14. And uh, just by way of introduction, um, I know some have been able to make it. I know some have been out of town, some have been sick. Um, but over the last five weeks, we have studied some interesting characters in the book of Proverbs. Uh, we started with the fool uh, or the morally deficient person. Uh, then we jumped into the simple person. And remember, he is, uh, he is the person who is like a city without walls. He's open to everything. He's easily led astray. He believes everything, right? Um, so that, that is a simple person. Uh, and then we painfully meditated um, uh, on the most hopeless character, the scorner. Uh, or we defined him as the hostile, wicked person. Have you ever met somebody who is just, t just angrily obstinate toward the things of God? And it's almost like, you know, there's, you're, you're trying to plow a steel row. You know, you, you, can't, you can't plow it. It's just a hardened heart. Um, he, is, he is very hopeless in this book. But then last week, we began to study the wise man. Um, and what's interesting is I told our church, I said, we've got, tw I had 25 pages of notes on this person. Um, there is, there's a lot to cover and I could not fit, um, properly the, uh, a message about the wise man in one lesson. And there's so much to know about this person. We were only able to cover two things, focus on two attributes. You remember what they were, his heart and his mouth. The wise man we learned listens to instruction because he wants to add to his knowledge. He wants to be that man in 2 Timothy 3.17 who is perfect. He is mature. He's built up. He's thoroughly furnished unto all good works. He, he wants to be what God wants him to be. Uh, he, he attains to a level where he can wisely guide the ship of his life. The Bible says he attains unto wise counsels. And I gave the example that one of these days, um, there, there's some young people in our church who are going to leave the winged protection of their parents. And they're going to have to sail their ship uh, on, the, on the harsh waters of this life. But the wise man is able to properly direct the path of his ship. He has attained unto this wise counsel. That's Proverbs 1, number, uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, I believe. Uh, he loves those who correct him. He sees them as friends who are helping him grow. Then we learn that he seeks wise counsel and he is easily reproved. Remember, we studied about how the fool can be whipped and he doesn't learn anything. Uh, and he could get a hundred lashes and none of those lashes would reach his heart. They would only reach his back. But to a wise person, one word of correction does more than a hundred lashes the fool. So he is a person who is open. Uh, he loves uh, those that correct him. Then we went and looked at his mouth or his speaking, his lips. Uh, he's a person who doesn't speak rashly. He doesn't just blurt out all his thoughts. He spares his words. He uses his words to heal others and not to hurt others. He is not instigating fights. His, 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 his attitude is, I want to stop the fight. He is, he is the biblical peacemaker. H have you ever just had somebody try, uh, try to intervene in a situation and they're able to pacify one side and pacify another and bring the sides together? That is a wise attribute of somebody. Uh, they are a peacemaker. Um, he can pacify the wrath of others with wise words. And may I say there is a lot of convicting stuff when we study this Bible, when we study this book. And may I say when I read this book, there is so much room for us to grow, isn't there? Have you ever just read the Bible and it's almost just like you're getting hit and you're getting hit and you're getting cut and you're getting cut and oh, I'm imperfect and I can't, I'm, I'm nowhere near I should be. Listen, Paul said, listen, I'm not even apprehended. Paul, the greatest missionary that ever lived, he didn't even apprehend, right? So we all have room to grow, right? So if, if that is true, God has more for us to consider tonight about the wise man. So we must pray and ask God to help us. And here's the most helpful thing you can do when you open your Bible. Here's the most helpful thing you can do when somebody starts preaching the Bible. Tell the Lord, the answer to the Lord is yes. 
ahead of time. Well, I don't know what he's going to say. As long as it's Bible, Lord, yes, sure. If it is your will, if it's clearly outlined in Scripture, God, my first answer is 100% you. Yes, yes, Lord, I want you to be first in my life. Yes. And if we do that, God will give us a teachable, a peaceful spirit, and we will grow that way. Let's have a word of prayer, then we'll begin to study about the wise man tonight. Lord, we come to you, and Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we are so needy. Lord, we're constantly beseeching you for wisdom. God, we're constantly needing your help and your hand in our lives. And Lord, I ask tonight that you would reach down again through your spirit, that you would illuminate your word. God, that you would teach us, that you would guide us into all truth, that you'd make the path plain before us. And I pray, Lord, this would not just be another Sunday where we cover Bible verses and, and we, we learn just uh, things to, to put in our minds, but God, that we would just apply these, these eternal truths to our heart and that we would be more like Christ. We would grow in grace tonight and be perfect, truly furnished under all good works. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go to chapter 14. Let's look at verse number 16. I'm going to give you three points tonight concerning the wise man. For those of you taking notes, uh, I want to first of all focus on the righteousness of the wise man. Number one, the righteousness of the wise man. I'm going to build a case tonight. Verse number 16 says, A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. The wise man fears God. The wise man wants to stay far away from sin. He wants to be, uh, he wants to depart from sin. He stands a great distance from it. He abstains from all appearances of it. And then the Bible says, but the fool rages and the fool is confident. Um, don't live your life like the foolish person in the Bible who doesn't heed the things of God, who doesn't fear the, the wicked things that this world has to try to ensnare you and try to catch you. Um, be, be weary of this world and be wise and abstain from appearances of evil. Get as far from evil evil as, as, as far as possibly you can. The wise man knows nothing good comes when he runs from God and he fears the Lord. And let me tell you something. Fear is not just fear of divine punishment. Fear, honestly, I believe is not fear of correction and the hand of our God. Fear, I believe, is also being afraid to hurt the heart of God. I don't know if any of your parents ever did this, but they didn't, maybe you did something and they didn't spank you for it, but they said, you know what? I am just disappointed. And it's almost like, please, please, here's a belt. Please do anything but say that. Or, you know, I, you know I've had those moments where, where my mom looked at me and said, I, I, thought, you know, I thought you knew better, and I'm, I'm just really disappointed. And I, I would have preferred, you know, a beating to that. You know, and I, and I, think, we look, I think the wise person looks at God like that. God, I don't want to hurt your heart. I want to be influenced by the love of Christ. I, I know the, the goodness of God. I've experienced it. And God, I fear to hurt or sin against your goodness. You think about how many times God has forgiven us. You know, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God shows us grace. God shows us mercy. He super abounds his love towards us. And he is constantly opening the doors of forgiveness, inviting us to repent. He's gracious with us. But how many times do we sin uh, we, we, may I say we abuse his grace, if I can phrase it that way. The wise person, as they grow in grace, realizes, hold on a second, I love the Lord. Hold on a second, God is good to me. Hold on a second, God, is, God has done this and done this and done this. God, I, I don't want to sin against you. God, I love you. I don't want you to be disappointed with me. And there is a righteousness to the wise person. Uh, you know, when I think about this, I think of, about old Bishop Colley, uh, Polycarp, excuse me, of Smyrna. He was facing being burned at the, sta uh, the, the stake, and uh, the Roman official said, listen, if you just sacrifice to the heathen gods, we'll let you go. And here's what old Polycarp said. He said, four score in six years, or 86 years, have I served him, and he has never done me injury. How then can I blaspheme my king and my savior 
That's the attitude of a wise person. God, you've been so good to me. How can I sin and abuse your grace? Now, we all, we all do. We're all sinners. But it's our heart attitude. Are you, do you keep a low sin account with God? Do you fear getting far away from God? Do you fear hurting the heart of God? These are all wise things that are in, our, uh, in a wise person's heart. Take your Bibles. Flip over to chapter 20. I'd like to build the case further. Chapter 20, verse number 1. We're speaking about the righteousness of the wise person. Proverbs 20, verse number one. The Bible says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. You know, I got to thinking about this. Strong drink deceives a person by fragrance and overcomes him. It promises pleasure and satisfaction, but it can never truly deliver. Drunkenness leads to pain, and so it mocks the person at the end. And here's what Solomon says. Those who give themselves over to it, who are not guarded against it, who don't, who don't act wisely, are not, uh, are not acting wisely, excuse me. It is a snake. It smiles at a man when he approaches, but at the last, it bites him. Can I tell you, um, our, the church that we were at previously for I think maybe 10 years or so when I was there, uh, we were a part of the Nashville Rescue Mission. We would go down there and hold services for the people and try to be a blessing to the people. And I cannot tell you how many people we ran across whose lives were destroyed by this cobra. Can I tell you the hardest, the, the worst thing I ever saw? A pastor from Canada lost everything. Everything, his family, his church, his influence, and he's in some rescue mission amongst people who are on hard drugs. He lost everything because of that substance. And Solomon says, listen, it is not wise to, to play with that cobra, if you will. Strong drink will bite you. Uh, the wise stay away from the snake den. And can I tell you, the wise stay away from the snake aisle. Let me say it that way. It is this is this is old this is old testament wisdom, if you will. Stay far away from it. Don't suffer yourself to be drawn into it. Stay away from the headache and the heartache of it, the consequences of it. When we look at a wise person, we see a person who is who does not want to offend God. We see a person who wants to be righteous, right? May I, may I say the New Testament speaks of not being drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but being filled with the Spirit. When we think about what drunkenness does to a person, it controls a person. You know, there was, there's, a, there's a time in my life, and you say, why are you coming down alcohol so much? Because I, it, it has affected my life. Um, you know, I, I know personally there was a time in my life that I'm not proud of, that I did things, and I would drink, and I, and I basically almost became a borderline alcoholic. I'm not proud of it. I'm not glorifying sin. I hate that time in my life. But when I would get on that substance, I would say things I wouldn't normally say. I would do things that I normally wouldn't do because, you know what, that substance was controlling me. But the wise man says, I don't want that substance controlling me. I want the spirit controlling me. I want the spirit to, to, to help my tongue say things I normally wouldn't say in things of righteousness. And, you know, when, when that drink would carry me to these places and I would do stupid things, God, I don't want to be filled with that snake. God, I want to be filled with your spirit, and I want you to direct my path. God, I want you to guide me. God, I want you to control me. That is the righteousness of a wise person. Listen, I understand it is a cobra, and I don't want to play with it. I don't want to get close to it. God, I don't want to be deceived by, by it. You know, some people say this. Well, preacher, I can handle it. What about the ones who are watching you? You bring a cobra into your home. Yeah, maybe you're an adult, and maybe you can handle it. But eventually, you let a cobra in your home. It's going to bite somebody. Right. You know, I look at this, and there was, there was a man who I'm not going to say his name. You don't know him. A lot, nobody knows him. But a, an, an occurrence, a run-in that I had with somebody, and this person was the, the, of the common thought, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to have a couple. I'm going to relax. I'm, I'm going to take my mind off the day. I'm going to have a couple of hard ones, right, a couple of cool ones. And, and he would talk about it and talk about it. he's going to get this, and he's going to drink, and I would just sit there and kind of just be like, whatever, that's not my party, man. I'm not into that. And then one day, I heard him talking. You know, my son, he started drinking. And he was aghast. How dare he? I can't believe he started doing this. And then, you know, they got into the party life in college, and they were upset about that. And I got to thinking, honestly, if you didn't model it, they wouldn't have seen that example and thought it's okay. 
my dad plays with snakes. It won't hurt me. You know, I think about this. We don't know, and you know, there, there's so much scientifically we do not know about addiction. It's ridiculous. About how much even in our own genetics. Listen, you may not struggle with alcoholism, but there may be something in the genes of those that watch you that might struggle with it, that might have an addictive personality right here who saw that and thought it's okay. The first drink I ever had was in seventh grade. Seventh grade, hard drink because of the, the, the opportunity and its place in my house. If it wasn't there, I wouldn't have had an opportunity to partake of that. And if I didn't have the example that it was okay, then I wouldn't years later struggle with the thing. Let me tell you how I struggle with it. You say, why are you coming down with it? Because it has affected me. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm the type of person that if I see it, my flesh starts to crawl. If I smell it, my flesh starts to crawl. I have a yearning for it because that is in my flesh. I am in this body of death. You say, preacher, why are you telling me? Because I was foolish enough to play with a bunch of snakes. I got bit a whole bunch of times, and now it's affected me for the rest of my life. If I was wise and I looked at some of the people who I know who struggle in my family with drinking and would have said, you know what, I need to stay away from that. I don't know how it's going to affect me physiologically, mentally. I don't know how it's going to. Listen, I'm paying the price, and I'm going to pay for that, those stupid decisions, for the rest of my life. That's what I have to bear for my consequences. I can't even walk in that aisle. I have to walk by. You want to know why? Because I made some dumb decisions. But if I was wise, I would have stayed away from it. And can I tell you, if I had stayed away from it, I would have had peace in my heart talking about it. God help us to be righteous about the things he says to be righteous about. It's not an okay thing. It's not an okay thing. He doesn't want anyone. Here's what I believe. The wise man doesn't want anybody else in a mission because he modeled the thing. The wise man is not deceived by that bottle. He doesn't want anyone else going to the bottle because of him either. Take your Bibles. Let's go to another passage as we're building the case. Flip over to chapter 11, please. And I hope you don't think less of me for telling you my struggle. God saves old sinners. Aren't you glad? God changes old sinners. Amen. Amen. Go to verse number 30, please, of chapter 11. This is an interesting verse. The Bible says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. What the Bible is teaching here is the righteous are a blessing to other people. You know, we, we, uh, we're in an agricultural state, and I've heard people talk about trees and apple trees. And I've, uh, throughout my life, I've, I've been to apple orchards and things of that nature. But when you look at a, a precious tree, it brings forth precious and useful fruit. A tree really is just a channel to bring nourishment and encouragement to everyone, right? You, have you ever just gone to an apple orchard and, and you know, like, oh, here's what, what I got to thinking about. When we first moved here, we went to that, uh, there was, there's a whole bunch of apple orchards and stuff like that, and then we had one of them uh, apple donuts. You know what I'm talking about? Am I, am I, am I preaching this more, this night, right? And I got to thinking, man, this is wonderful. This is so good. It smells so wonderful. It, and I'm pretty sure those donuts didn't grow on a tree, so that doesn't really fit my example. But there were plenty of apples around, and those probably would have helped too. But when, when you go somewhere and you enjoy it, that, that fruit, that tree has brought you enjoyment. The righteous are a channel as well. The, the righteous are a tree of life. You know, um, all that are wise are like a tree. They will bring channels of blessing to men. How? They will win souls, thereby bringing bringing them eternal refreshment and gladness. One of the greatest exercises of, a, of, of wisdom is winning people to the Lord. Amen. That is the greatest exercise. You say, preacher, I don't have the best education. Preacher, there, I've, I've made dumb decisions in my life. Preacher, if I could go back like you and, and redo some of the things in my life, preacher, I would. Preacher, I, sometimes I think God can't use me. Preacher, I think I'm, I'm too physically unable to do anything in the church. And preacher, I, and I have all these doubts. Listen, the wisest thing that anybody can do with their life is say, God, I'm going to win somebody to you. God, I'm going to be a witness. God, if, if, I, if I don't know what to say, God, I can give out a track by faith and say, hey, this tells you how you can go to heaven. I love you. Jesus loves you. Please read it. You know, listen, that is, that is the wisest thing that we can do as believers per the scriptures. The Hebrew word there uh, about winning them is the same thing as catching them. You know, we, we've got, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but 
some animal is in our trash. And we got bungee cord, and we tried to get that thing and wrap that thing, and whatever animal that was, I hope it's not a skunk, because my luck is I'm going to open the trash in the middle of the night, and there it is. Um, I don't know if, if skunks eat trash. I just have a fear of it. You can help me out with that, I guess. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know what type of of animal it is in there but no matter what i can't i cannot get that thing out of my trash and i was talking to brother mark about it he's like you want me to bring a trap over and i thought that is wonderful i was just gonna put rat poison in the thing and see what happens no no but i'm joking uh, or i'm not i don't know if you'll think later but <laughs> it's the same idea of trapping something of catching a bird if you will um a fowler uses his skill and diligence to catch birds so a wise man will use his mental and spiritual faculties to pluck them out of the snare of the devil he is concerned with the fate of others he is not ignorant of his requirement to share the gospel now here, here's here's something that we all have said in our lives or might be saying it now pastor i don't think i could i don't think i know enough i don't i don't i don't know how to present the thing i'm just not educated enough or familiar enough to share the gospel and here's kind of what i'm building towards what would a wise person do what would a wise person do a wise person when they come to something they're not familiar in they will work to add knowledge to it. I may not be the best, but Lord, I, I don't want to be left out in the cold. Lord, I want to know. You know, have you ever started a job? And I, I don't know, maybe, maybe none of you are like me. I hate not knowing what I'm doing. I hate sitting there feeling like an idiot. I hate sitting there feeling like I'm, I'm not gaining up to speed. But you know what I learned a long time ago, and I've, I've kept the saying true. If you don't, what is it? If you don't feel dumb, what, what was it? What am I? What, if you don't feel stupid, you're not learning anything. Excuse me. I think, you know, and, and the goal is if you don't know, add to your wisdom. Read books on it. Listen to, to sermons on it. Come ask for assistance. Do what you can to add to your knowledge. Work at it. Try to be the best thing you can be for Christ. He wants us growing and winning others. That is a wise person. Number two, I want to talk about the labor of a wise man. The labor of a wise man. I'm going to turn there uh, so that you don't have to, but if you're taking notes, Proverbs chapter number 10. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 5. <clears throat> he that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. You know, we're in an agricultural state, right? It's an easy example. A wise person is going to, in their proper season, gather the fruits of the earth and put them in store against winter, right? If they don't do that, what happens? Poverty right? Why would you spend all of your, your money and your time planting if you're not going to gather, right? And, and I want you to understand kind of where we're coming from. He doesn't let his fields go unattended because he knows that'll lead to starvation. He is a man who uses his time and opportunities to improve his situation. He takes pains to gather to increase what he has. He wants to provide for his family, so he labors by the sweat of his brow. You know, I learned a long time ago, you won't drown in sweat. And I, and, and I learned a long time ago to be, to, to be working and, 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 and to try to provide and to try to put things away. When I first got married, I was a ball of stress because I thought I have to take care of somebody. Uh, and and it just it, it was it was just a pressure I put on myself because God was looking at me as the person who would be counted responsible for our home. So I, what did I do? I worked hard. I worked my way up. I got promoted. I, I I tried to do what I could. I tried to be the very best employee I could. When I left that job, I had one of the highest scores as far as technical ability, a journeyman level. Because you say, well, you work for the IRS, and that's something to try to be the best of the IRS, right? Because I just said, listen, I, I want to be the best I can to take care of my family and I think there's a generation that hasn't learned that to try to work hard and to put in an honest day's work listen if you sweat at work it's not a bad thing you know unless you're in an office and you've got AC I mean no but it's it's, it's okay to work hard and the wise man knows I have to put in the work I have to grow what I have the wise man doesn't love sleep. He doesn't spend his life idling his time away. He doesn't neglect his responsibilities. He's a worker. 
You know, when I was 25, I was into, I was into playing uh, video games a lot. That was me. And so, for some reason, I saw an ad for something that I would have probably played back when I was 25. And I got to thinking, well, that's only $8. I could probably pay for that. That's only $8. And I got to thinking, what would you do with all that time you spent on that? You could, have, you could be using that to serve the Lord. And you know what I did? I didn't click it. I didn't buy it. Because personally speaking, I want to use the time that I have to serve the Lord, right? These, these, and listen, I'm not perfect. I'm not the best example. But I'm just saying we all understand the idea of working hard, using your measure of health to work, to take care of your responsibilities. That is the Bible thing to do. And let me tell you, that is the wise thing to do. Do we have a heart to work? Well, I, I think yes. I don't think anybody in this room is lazy. I don't believe that. But let me, let me apply this to the things of God. We're in the summer of life. We've got work to do. We've got knowledge to attain. We've got spiritual harvest to sow and reap. I think some people look at the things of God and they say, I can just be idle on that. Listen, the wise person says, I'm in the summer. It's time to gather. It's time to invest in the things of God. It's time to serve in the things of God, beloved. Listen, we are in the summer of our lives. We cannot retire yet. The winter of death has not come. There's one day when winter will come across every doorstep, will meet us in our beds, and all that we have done, that's it. There's nothing else to add to it. You will bring whatever spiritual harvest, whatever sheaves you have with you to heaven. And here is my hope as your preacher. I hope that every person, when the winter comes and your summer of work is over, I hope you hear, well done. Well done. Thank you. Can you imagine hearing the Lord say, thank you. Thank you for using your time wisely. Thank you for working hard enter into the joy of the Lord. That's what I want. I want us to, to strive to be wise, to have a harvest. And then lastly, number three, let's talk about, in conjunction with that, let's talk about the blessing of the wise man. The blessing of the wise man. Take your Bibles, Proverbs 3. <clears throat> Proverbs 3, 35. <clears throat> the Bible says in verse number 35 of chapter 3, I like this promise. The wise shall inherit what? Glory. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. You know what the end of a wise person is? Honor. Glory. You know what the end of a fool is? Is everlasting shame. The saints who act wisely are sure to inherit glory. An exceeding eternal weight of glory. The saved person, the child of God, has heaven for his inheritance. And our glory, I, I, we, we, we sometimes have to tell ourselves, our glory is not of this world. Our praise is not of men. Our praise is of God. We live today for excellent things tomorrow. Amen. You know, you, if, you, if you're into finances, Dave Ramsey all, uh, talks about living poor so that you can retire rich. Right. And it's the same mentality. Sometimes we have to curb what we want for the spiritual gains of tomorrow. That's how we live. And I believe the wise man has a blessing at the end of his life. We have inconceivable, incomparable riches of glory waiting to be entered into. And I believe the wise believer is the one who doesn't go into eternity with wood, hay and stubble. Let me tell you, the wise person enters into eternity with gold, silver and precious stones. Can, can, can we in our mind's eye do something? I'm a visual person. Any of you visual people? With your eyes of faith, look past the clouds. Fly past the stars. Ascend higher and further past time. Look past those pearly gates. Look ahead beyond the streets of gold. Fly past your mansion. Enter the heavenly temple. Keep going past the trillion, excuse me, trillions of angels. Fly into his throne room. Stand alongside your advocate. By faith, do you see the endless riches that are at his feet? Do you see the piles and piles and piles of crowns of glory and honor? And do you see the, do you see the gold, the silver, the precious stones? All of those things are reserved for those that work for him. Now fly back to where you're at now. What are you doing? 
Are you just sitting here saying, well, I, I, I'm not really doing anything. There is rewards available. It is up to us. It is up to the wise to seek them and, and, to, and to secure them. But notice the fools are those who refuse to believe on Christ, and they will have a promotion too in the afterlife. That word promote has the idea of lifting them up to sweep them away. Have you ever just seen dust get swept up like this and then get carried away? The Bible is teaching that the, that the wise will have a promotion of blessing, but the, the lost, the fools, will be swept up only to be carried away. Their promotion, can I phrase it like this? They're promoted like Haman. They're promoted to the gallows. That's their promotion. You know what our promotion is? Inconceivable glory. Inexhaustible riches in glory. That is, that is what is waiting for the promotion of the wise. Let's turn to one last verse, and then we'll be done about speaking about the wise man. Turn to chapter 15, verse number 24. Chapter 15, verse 24. This is interesting. It says, the way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The way of a wise man's life, here's what it is. It leads and tends to heaven and happiness. He has trusted Jesus Christ and departed from the paths of hell. Can I tell you, that is such a reward to know that one of these days, heaven is my home and not hell. If you never got anything else in this life, all who are in Christ are the richest this world has ever seen because we have heaven for our home. We have a path that does not lead downward, but a path that leads upward. There is a blessing to, the, to those who are in Christ, to the wise. We have trusted Jesus and departed from that path. We have a reward here and a blessing thereafter. We are not going to hell, but we can have a blessing of a heavenly path here. God will direct me. God will provide for me. But catch this, the way of a lost person is under his feet, but the way of a saved person is over his head. Let me say it again. Your life, since coming to Christ, you have the benefit of walking a different path. Amen. You have a new life in Christ. You don't have to live for this world anymore. You know what? You think about this. If you never came to Christ, your path would lead to misery and to loss. You could accrue and accrue and have fame and fortune. And listen, if you don't know Jesus, I hope, you know, if you're not going to come to Christ, I hope you live life like that. I hope you, you like a fruit, squeeze out every drop of, of, of good out of this life. Because literally one second after death, it's all gone. You accumulate for the fire. That's it. But the wise, those in Christ, our path is not that path. We are not, you know, sometimes have you ever served the Lord and said, Lord, I feel like, and maybe we won't say it with our lips, but we say, Lord, is this a waste? Preacher, I wouldn't. Come on. Come on. We may not say that exact word, but sometimes we think, my service isn't accepted. My service isn't worthwhile. What is the point? I'm not getting any of the blessings I see everybody else get. Listen. We are living for tomorrow. We have a path of eternal rewards, and that is the blessing of the wise man. His life tends to and leads to heaven. But the foolish person doesn't think of the upper path, a way to heaven. But the wise man, it is a plain way of life. He is working and walking towards his reward in Christ. The wise man doesn't walk a path like the lost. He isn't going the same direction. And let me tell you, he's got a different reward. Can you imagine some of the greatest kings that have ever lived, so, and the law, these lost kings, some of the most famous athletes who've died with riches in their bank account, who have built a claim, and they've built a name, and there's been statues built to these emperors, and they've lived their lives, and they've come to the pinnacle of success, and in eternity to realize it means nothing. But to, a, lot, to, a, to a, a saved person, let me tell you something. If you decide, I'm going to serve Christ. You know, I'm just going to serve the Lord. I'm going to honor Christ. I'm going to win souls. I'm going to live right. I'm going to try to be the best testimony I can. You will have far greater, greater riches than any emperor, any king, any athlete. You walk a different path in this world. Why, why do we live the way we live? Because we've been changed. Our path has been changed. Our rewards have been changed. May I, may I bring it all to a head here? That's why the wise person acts different. That's why the wise person isn't foolish with the things of God, because he has been brought to understand, I can have better things. 
You know, if, if, if we lived our lives for the things of this world and died and never had any of the rewards, that would be a great shame. But how horrible would it be to have the opportunities that we have and to squander them and enter eternity with wood, hay, and stubble. Listen, the wise person, he is righteous. He is, he's keeping away from sin. He is a worker. He's trying to do things right. He's trying to win souls. He's trying to be the best he can. But at the end of the day, here's our hope. There is a blessing awaiting. Sometimes it feels like your service is not worthwhile. I get it. I've been there. Sometimes you feel like, what's the point? Sometimes you feel like, is, am I making any real difference? Just keep going. Your reward is different from anybody else in this lost world. And the wise person makes their way down that path because there is a reward waiting. What a promise. What a hope we have in Christ tonight. I hope that these wise things have been applied and will be applied to our lives this week. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed as we stand. Hi, this is Pastor Ryan. I want to thank you for taking time to watch our video, and I really hope it was a blessing to you. Uh, if you found that it was a blessing, please do us a favor and share this video with your friends. And uh, if you are in the Newcastle, Indiana area, and you're looking for a church, or you're not involved in a church, and you would like to come check us out, I want to just personally invite you to do so, okay? I want to thank you for all of your time today, and I want to say God bless you. Thank you.